hello and welcome back to my channel welcome if you're new my name is hallie i'm so happy that you're here we've officially reached the halfway point of 2024 which is literally crazy i'm so excited today we are going to be doing the mid-year book tag i got my list of questions from larry reads on youtube she just posted her mid-year wrap up a couple of days ago and i watched her so i got all my questions from her i'll link her video down in the description and i'll also leave the questions that way if you guys want to you can answer the questions in the comments and we can kind of compare everyone's reads for this year. So we're just going to get right into it because I don't want this video to be too long and I tend to yap whenever it comes to these books. So the first question is the best book that you've read so far. So I'm going to start this off with three books because I can't choose. I have like my top three so far and the first one is so obvious, A Court of Mist and Fury. This book has forever changed me and I would hear people say that whenever they would talk about Akatar as a whole and I just you'll never be able to understand until you read the series and then you understand because this book specifically in the series was life changing for me. I have literally read through this physically one time. I have listened to the graphic audio, I think four times. And I also watch little plot breakdowns or plot recaps whenever I'm like doing stuff as background noise because I just love this book so much. Let's just go forth through this video knowing that I probably could have put this book for like most of these questions, but I'm not going to so that we can have like a variety. But so far, this is definitely my favorite book to come out of this year, A Court of Mist and Fury love of my life. My second favorite book of 2024 so far, Serpent and the Wings of Night by Carissa Brabant. This is my first Carissa Brabant book and I was so afraid to start this because for some reason it just gave off very serious vibes. Like this felt like a very intimidating fantasy and it's so good. It's so good. It's enemies to lovers, it's trials, it's vampires, it's magic. It's just so good. Like it's so good. And lastly, Iron Flame by Rebecca Yaros. This is the second book in the Empyrean series. And this was so good. I was, I put this off for months because so many people hated on this book. Said it was like too long and they hated Violet in this. I just, I couldn't disagree more. I love her. I love this. I love Zayden. I love Violet. I love this storyline and the way that this ended. I can't wait for the next book. So these are my top three books of the year so far. And I think we can see a theme, romanticy. I love it. The next question is the best sequel that you've read so far. This one I feel like isn't technically a sequel. It's a novella that comes after the first book, but I had to put this because this is literally the best novella I have ever read. I rated it five stars. Six Scorched Roses by Carissa Broadbent. This is actually the book that comes after The Serpent and the Wings of Night. And then there's like one more book and this is like a duology with a novella in between. This book is so good. I did not expect a five star to come out of this novella because it's like, it doesn't even pertain with the main characters of the duology. It's just like a side story, like a little mini side story. And it's literally only, it's less than 200 pages. In the way that I was so emotionally attached to these characters and there was so much plot and so much romance and it was just so well written. I read it in one sitting and it deserved no less than five stars. It was so good. I feel like you could read this even if you don't wanna have to read through Serpent and the Wings Night first, so. Six Scorched Roses. I also put a second one for this question and it is The Fake Out by Stephanie Archer. This is the second book in a hockey romance series actually. And this, I also rated five stars. I've actually rated both of the books in this series so far, five stars. The first one is Behind the Net. I just loved this so much. For some reason, I just love Stephanie Archer's writing. First of all, I read this on my Kindle and I did not realize that she's like kind of a little thick for a hockey romance, I feel like. It just goes by so fast. The characters are so lovable and and also, I feel like in this one specifically, what made me love it even more is the fact that like both of our main characters had like their own little subplots going on with like their emotions and things that they had to overcome themselves. But then also there were so many other little side plots with like their family members or one of the teammates or she just gave us so much more than just a simple hockey romance in this. And I read it on New Year's and I didn't know that a portion of this book at the end of the book takes place during New Year's. It was kind of like perfect timing. Love this. I definitely recommend both The Fake Out and Behind the Net. I don't know when the third book is coming out. 
hopefully soon. Moving on, we have new releases that you haven't read yet, but want to. This one, I actually have two books for as well. I got both of these books actually from Book of the Month, and I just haven't had time to read them yet. The first one is The Reappearance of Rachel Price. I really, really, really want to get to this because I've read A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson, and I loved it so much. I loved the writing in it and the way that there was 10,000 plot twists in it, and I didn't see a single one coming. It was so good. I ate it up. So I really, really, really want to get to this. And then the next one that I put out is actually called The Husbands by Holly Gramazio. I think that this is her debut like novel, but this one just sounded so interesting. It's basically about a magic attic and anytime one of her husbands goes up into the attic, a different one comes down until she like finds the right match. But I don't know, the premise of that just sounded so interesting. So definitely want to get to that sometime this year. The next question is my most anticipated release for the second half of the year. This one I can answer without a doubt, Reckless by Lauren Roberts. I have been patiently waiting for this book to come out since last year. I'm so excited and me and my friend and actually Marky is going to go with me too, but we got tickets to go to the signing for Reckless. I wasn't able to get the tickets in time to get the like where you get, what is it called? Like where she brings out the new book and talks about it. I literally only have access to the signing line, but you better bet I'm bringing all of my books to get signed. I'm counting down the days for that. But if you don't know, Reckless is the second book in the Powerless trilogy. So far there's been Powerless and Powerful, a novella after Powerless. And then Reckless is coming out in July, the very beginning of July. I think it's the second, I think. How did I forget that? I don't know, but I'm so excited. Definitely that one. I just got shorter because my legs were hurting from sitting on them. The next one that we have is my biggest surprise. And I've seen people take this like both ways where they do like a book I thought I was going to love and hated versus like a book that I thought I was going to hate, not hate, but like a book I didn't have high hopes in that ended up surprising me. So I actually have one for both. And I'm going to start off with a disappointment. I just recently read this and I just did not see it coming at all. And I think that this is the first book that I've actually ever rated in the two star range. So The Veiled Kingdom by Holly Renee. I know she's so cute. She's pink. She's Barbie. I thought I was going to love this and I literally just it started off so strong. The plot was so good. Magic was so good. I loved the characters but then the next like 90 five percent of the book was literally just like the characters doing the exact same thing every single day and like flirting with each other but we got like no backstory really to the characters i didn't know really anything about the characters they didn't know anything about each other i don't know why they like each other but for some reason they do but then they're like oh, but i can't but i'm like why can't you because there's been no explanation to anything. And then on top of that, the male main character was like so rude and not in a way that's like, cause I've read books before where I'm like, why do I like when these guys are so rude? Like if a guy said that to me in real life, I would literally punch him. But in this book, I'm like, okay. It wasn't like that because I didn't even like him enough to let him be mean. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, he's morally gray, but like we love him. He literally was just rude and annoying. And honestly, the way that he was being rude was like giving me the ick. Cause I'm like, that's so embarrassing. Like that's so embarrassing that you're saying that out loud right now. So I kept giving it a chance cause like maybe the end will redeem itself like there's a second book coming out and maybe like the second book will be better the ending of this book was literally just the cherry on top of like i hate this man i'm still gonna read the second book <laughs> because i have issues and i have to see it through right now we're not on good terms that's all i have to say about that the next question <laughs> oh wait no not the next question i still have to do my biggest surprise but positive for that, I put The Serpent in the Wings of Night simply because, like I said, I've put this off for a while because it just served this as a serious fantasy. In my head, this was one of those fantasies that just like had a war going on, very serious plot, crumbs of romance, and like no spice. Let me tell you, this is one of the best enemies to lovers I have ever read. There's like the perfect amount of spice. I love the way that the spice is written. Just everything about this is so good. So, love her. The next question is favorite new author, debut, or new to you? That one's gonna have to go to Carissa Broadbent for sure because the first two books that I ever read of hers were both five stars. So it only makes sense. The next question is newest fictional crush. I feel like it only makes sense for me to say the Bat Boys. Like the way that I like... I just, I love all three of them so much. Obviously, Resand has a special place in my heart, but I'm currently reading A Court of Silver Flames. You know, it's like you love them all for different reasons, but they each deserve a special spot 
in your heart. Bad boys, forever and always. The next question, book that made you cry. Oh my God. I did not expect this because honestly, I think that this is the only book to ever make me like shed real tears because most of the time, if a book is going to make me cry, specifically like in A Court of Wings and Ruin, there's a part at the end of the book where you see videos all over of people like ugly crying. I understand why. When I read that part, I simply decided no. <laughs> I just continued reading and let myself be delusional and pretend that nothing happened because I refused to feel that pain. So I was very surprised when the seven year slip had me so emotional. This book is so good. Honestly, this book could have been put as like a surprise book too, like a book that I didn't have too high of hopes for, but ended up loving. I love this book. It's so good. For some reason, I was thinking it would be more like a literary fiction, rom literary, rom literary. What am I thinking? I thought it was gonna be like more of a serious type of romance than it was. I don't know if I'm saying this right. I was intimidated by this book is basically what I'm trying to say. The way that it talks about grief and also the romance between these two characters because it is like a dual timeline. Basically, it's like a magical apartment and every once in a while, whenever the girl enters the apartment, it'll be seven years in the past. She meets someone in the apartment seven years in the past and it just goes through their story and it's just so beautiful and i really did myself dirty because at the end of this i was listening to sad music and i literally could not hold it together like i finished this book turned the camera off and just cried for like 20 minutes because i was feeling it so deeply it's so good it's so good i actually i feel like i want to reread this next year once i've had like time away from it and like annotate it because especially now that i've read it through one time i just want to like reread it and see maybe like things that i missed i don't know i just feel like i will have a different appreciation for it reading it a second time so so maybe next year I will do a reread of this, but so good. Had me sobbing. 10 out of 10 recommend listening to a sad playlist though while you read it because it just pulls the feelings out. It's like whenever you're feeling depressed and instead of like doing the smart thing and trying to make yourself feel better, you're like, actually, I wanna wallow in my sadness and I'm just going to play Billie Eilish for five hours and cry. That's what you should do with this. Put on a sad playlist and then feel it. The next question is a book that made you happy. I actually have two for this one. The first one, again, is The Fake Out. I just feel like this one had a lot of talk about like making changes for yourself. Like if you wanna be a different type of person that you can do that. And also just talked about like feeling comfortable in your own skin and also just like, I don't know, it just covered so many topics. And also I just love the romance in this, like Rory Miller. So this is the first one. The next one that I put is actually a little cowboy romance. It's Done and Dusted by Lila Sage. This is the first book that I have ever read by Lila Sage. This is the first book in the Rebel Blue Ranch series. Honestly, this book made me so happy because the main character has ADHD and I felt so seen through her. Like, first of all, this is such a quick and easy little cowboy romance. And honestly, it gives Chestnut Springs vibes, but it's like half the length and just reads so quick. Like if you want to try Chestnut Springs, but you're afraid or intimidated by like the size of the series and the books, definitely read Lila Sage's books to get into it because you'll get a feel of like what you're gonna get in Chestnut Springs, but like it's like a little sampler. But the the fact that it had so much that I could relate to personally through ADHD made me feel very happy because I've never read a book where the main character has ADHD. In the author's note, she says, if you've ever had a hard time explaining why you leave literally everything until the last minute, why you feel so out of control, why your tongue feels like it doesn't belong in your mouth when the music is too loud or any of the countless other things that we feel as part of ADHD, you might see yourself in Done and Dusted. That was just in the author's note already. I'm like, okay, I'm gearing up. I'm gonna love this. She gets me. I'm just gonna read you a couple of the things that I have have tabbed and highlighted in here. I've always felt like I've been doing a million things at once and felt like I had to give all of those things all of my attention. I thought about the way that being diagnosed had changed things for me. All of a sudden, I could explain why I did the things the way I did. It was a revelation for me. It had made things different, but not in the way that I expected. I'd hoped the diagnosis would be a fix-all, that I would no longer feel so desperate to be in complete control all the time, and that I would stop making impulsive decisions based on the fact that it made me feel like I was in charge of my own life for a minute. That didn't happen. And Instead, I would kind of know why I was doing something, but I wouldn't be able to stop myself from doing it. I kept on doing too many things and fixating on things that made me feel like I had power. For a while, doing all these things would feel incredible. I felt like I could accomplish a million things and not drop any balls. I did it in high school, I did it in college, and I did it in my writing career. I went too hard, too fast, and this is the cycle of hyperfixation. Call me out a little harder, please. She goes on to say, like, talking about burnout. It didn't bring me any joy, but I was still doing it because I couldn't stop. It was almost impulsive. Then I hit the wall. 
I lost my motivation and I was too overwhelmed. I've just been so tired. I've slept through my alarm more than I ever have. I stopped taking my ADHD meds. I sat in my apartment and didn't move, letting my life pile up around me and I didn't even care. So I just love Lila Sage for that and I love this book for that. And because of this, honestly, I feel like the Rebel Blue Ranch series will always kind of hold a special little place in my heart just because I felt so seen and connected to this book. The next question is the most beautiful book that you've bought so far this year or received. I actually just got this book in the mail like two days ago. I ordered it so long ago. Like, I think I ordered it in January or February maybe. It couldn't have been more perfect timing because I'm literally reading this book right now. This is the fairy loot edition of Ruthless Vows. No, I don't have the first one. Yes, I'm depressed because it's selling for like over $200. One day I'll find a good deal on it and I'll get it. But until then I have ruthless vows to hold me over. And it's, it's just, it's so beautiful. First of all, the cover. Second of all, the edges. Then we take the dust jacket off. Are you actually joking? <laughs> Are you joking? Then we open it up. So this is my newest prized possession. Moving on, we have what books do you need to read by the end of the year? So for this one, I have three. These are like my three, I guess, biggest priorities as of now that I want to finish by the end of the year. The first being A Court of Silver Flames. I have to finish this. I'm on page 301, so I'll probably finish this either this month or next month. Probably next month, honestly, because I'm going to be moving in a week. But I have to finish it because Sarah J Mass announced that there's going to be another book in the Akatar series, and I just... I want to be caught up when that book comes out. So there's no way that I'm not finishing this by the end of this year. So the first one, A Court of Silver Flames, just so I can like be done with Akatar series until that one comes out. The next one is The Ashes and the Star Cursed King. This is just the second book in the duology to The Serpent in the Wings of Night and Six Scorched Roses. I just want to read this because this series is going to have I think two other duologies, like interconnected duologies within the same world that haven't come out yet. I think they're coming out. I don't actually know when, I need to check, but I want to be caught up on this as well for when those start coming out too. So it'll just be like less overwhelming. So this one, and then lastly, I have Throne of Glass. I want to at least start and read like the first three to four books in the Throne of Glass series by the end of this year, because I really wanna read Crescent City next year. So if I can get through at least like half of the Throne of Glass series, series by the end of this year, then I will be a happy girl. So that is the last like series on my priority list to either finish or just get far through by the end of this year. That brings us to the end of the questions for the 2024 mid-year book tag. I can't believe that we are already halfway through the year. I hope you guys enjoyed watching. Like I said, I'm going to leave the questions in the description below. So feel free to answer those in the comments so that we can all see what each other's reading has been like throughout this year. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!